welcome to the bunk bed tour. The, this is uh, what it looks like during the day to a sofa. During the nighttime, we will take the mattresses off and it becomes the front bed um, where my parents sleep. After we move these mattresses, then we can set up the bed. This is what the mattress looks like after the cushions are taken off. Uh, if you hit this switch right here, um, the, the bunk bed, the top bunk will come down. This is when the top bunk is fully down. Um, normally we just take one of the sleeping bags and put it up here. And this is where my sister normally sleeps. Uh, there are outlets up at the uh, top bunk in the bottom of the bunk for us to like charge your phones or uh, anything you want to like plug in. Um, I normally sleep on the bottom bunk because uh, my sister normally gets up late or so I, I come out earlier. This is what the bed looks like. Um, I'm like um, around six foot and I could lay out fully, which is nice. Um, yeah, it's pretty comfortable after a long day of camping. One of the considerations in designing this space was I wanted it to be open where there's a one just open space uh, for air to flow, but also I can have a clear view from the rear view mirror all the way to the back of the van. We have a switch here um, that it, if you press it one way, it will continue going until you stop it. But there are switches you could use where as soon as you take your finger off the button, it stops. And so it's up to you to decide like what, what would be safer. Uh, for us, we have teens, so we felt that they can manage the responsibility better. But for younger kids, you may want to consider having a, you know, a stop motion switch and also maybe having like some kind of railing on it but that would affect how high or low the bunk bed could be so the mechanics of the bed uh, it's a system of linear actuators so there are four linear actuators and four linear actuators. okay i know that got real technical but i assure you you don't need to be an engineer to do this take a deep breath and let's walk through it before we get into the mechanics of the bunk bed i just want to shout out those youtubers who put these detailed videos of or time lapses of them actually building things when we first started this build you know i would take footage here and there but i realized very quickly it's either i'm going to build this thing or i'm going to record this thing i wasn't trying to do both so i'm going to do my best right now to walk you through the mechanics of this bunk bed system a lot of this build was territory i've never walked into before it was Things that I not only never did before, but things that I never saw anyone else do after watching hundreds of van videos. And so don't be afraid to experiment. If you have a vision in mind and you haven't seen someone else do it, it doesn't mean that it's not possible. Perhaps you're the first to think of it or you're the first to actually think it through and actually execute it. There's going to be a learning curve for everything that you do, especially when you don't have explicit instructions from some other source. You're going to make mistakes. Some of those mistakes are going to be minor. Some of those mistakes are going to be costly. The thing that you have to keep in mind is this van was built by someone. Mechanics maintain vehicles. Anything that you break can be fixed. Now, there may be costs associated with those mistakes, but you have to chalk it up as an investment in skill. This is not just about building or converting a van. It's about learning new skills. Through the process of building this van, I now feel confident that I can convert those skills to building an off-grid cabin that's solar powered and has, has a bathroom and has a shower. And so when you're looking at the cost and benefit, you have to not just include getting the job done as a benefit or goal, it's also the cultivation of skills that you can use in other places in your life. The first thing we have is a linear actuator. The linear actuator is essentially a pole nested inside of a housing. However long you want the linear actuator to rise, the pole is going to be about that size. So within the van constraints, you don't have like unlimited up and down potential because part of this is a fixed height. Attached to this housing, there's a motor and then you have your wiring, which is just your standard red and black 12 volt wiring. There are mounting pieces that typically come with the actuator, but you have to figure out based on your configuration how you want to connect it. In this bunk system, at the bottom, I'm using these brackets that came with the actuator, but at the top, it's a little bit different. 
if you're going to be wiring your own system, you're going to get very used to connecting from the appliance to the wiring to the fuse box and then down to the battery. So this is a pretty standard setup in terms of wiring. What I did is I left the original wiring for all of the linear actuators and then I placed another wire as kind of a central point. So you have the four, the four actuators come together at one point and at that point it connects back to the fuse box. And that way I wanted to make sure that the current was equal throughout all four um, linear actuators. Before you even install the linear actuators, one of the things that you want to do is test them to see if the timing is pretty much the same. I recommend that you purchase more linear actuators than you need for your project. And that way you can actually compare and find the ones that calibrate best for yours. So what I did was I bought six actuators and I tested them to see which four started and stopped the closest. And the way you do a comparison test is you take two of them, you attach both of them to the same uh, power source. This is a 12 volt power supply that can be plugged into any household outlet. And then you run a test. As you can see from this test, they don't stop at exactly the same time. It's up to you to decide what's an acceptable margin of error. What you don't want is a lot of lag time because that will cause the mattress to be slanted as it goes up or down. And depending on how your frame is worked, it could stretch or pull at the frame and ca cause it to get messed up. These are very powerful contraptions. They are designed to support a lot of weight. Linear actuators are actually used often in tractors to move snow plows and things like that. So this is not a light equipment. Uh, the, these particular actuators that, that we use in the bunk system are graded, each of them, to hold 330 pounds. And so in total, there's about over 1,300 pounds that these linear actuators can support in the bunk system. Now, even though it's attached to the bunk bed, you still want to make sure that it's going straight vertical up and down and it's, it, the actuator is not going to lean or move. For the track, what I used was a pocket hole track system. So this is for a pocket hole door that you might put in a bedroom or closet to save space when you don't want it to open in or out. It just slides into the wall. Um, the way this will be mounted is it will be mounted at the top horizontally and the, the wheels inside they're designed to slide back and forth. For this application, the track is mounted vertically so that the wheels slide up and down. And in all four corners, this ensures that the track is going straight up and straight down with the rest of the assembly. If you found this informative, then like and subscribe, click the notification bell. We're gonna have more content like this where we're taking a deep dive into components of the vehicle, including our bed setup system, which lots and lots of people have asked about. We're gonna upload a video soon that lists some small, inexpensive purchases that you can make that really are gonna make a huge difference in terms of you efficiently moving through your van build. For instance, this 12 volt tester, you can check wiring as you go and make sure things are wired correctly before you even hook them up to the main battery supply. We're also going to do some content on how we manage the space and just generally how we make the most of this experience of travel camping throughout this land.